Hello again, everyone. This is our science teacher, Tim Martin, and this is Meteorology Part 13. For those of you who are in my class, this is now the start of Meteorology Unit 2. This is where we'll start learning about and working with weather forecasting. So today's topic is wind and air masses. To start off with, there's some vocabulary that we want to understand. When we see weather maps, we often see big blue H's. These represent high pressures, or also known as anticyclones. What's going on here? To get an area of high pressure, there must be sinking air in the atmosphere. As the air sinks, it comes down, hits the ground, and spreads out. When it spreads out, we see that it spreads out in a clockwise circulation. This, of course, is in the northern hemisphere. Due to the Coriolis effect, these circulations are opposite in the southern hemisphere. So if we see a high pressure on a map, we can assume that the air circulating around that zone of high pressure is moving in a clockwise circulation. We can understand surface wind direction with something I call the right hand rule. On a weather map, put your thumb on that zone of high pressure, that indicates air is sinking, and your fingers will curl in the direction of air circulation. What about when we see one of those big red L's on the map? That's an area of low pressure, sometimes referred to as a cyclone. What's going on at a low pressure? In order to make a low pressure, we experience rising air. If the air is rising, we won't be left with a hole. Replacement air will come in to fill the area where air has been rising, and when that replacement air comes in, it will circulate in a counterclockwise direction around the areas of low pressure. In the Northern Hemisphere, low pressures circulate in a counterclockwise direction. Now you'll notice something else happened. What's this gray fuzzy thing? It's a cloud, of course. When we have rising air, that's one of the major processes necessary to make clouds. It's around low pressures where we see most weather occur. To understand surface wind direction, we can also use the right hand rule. Remember, your thumb indicates the direction air is moving. So at a low pressure, your thumb should point up and your fingers curl in a counterclockwise direction. Earth.null school is a tremendously useful visualization tool for seeing what's going on in the atmosphere. Here's a rather common view of the 48 continental United States and the surface winds. As we go up in the atmosphere, we'll start to see a bit of a change. The higher up we go, the change appears more dramatic. In fact, as we continue to go at higher levels in the Earth's atmosphere, we see the wind speeds pick up dramatically. By the time we get to about six or seven miles up, which is about at the edge of the troposphere, we see extremely strong winds, often exceeding 150, maybe even 200 miles an hour. In this case, two to 300 kilometers an hour. What's going on here? This is what we know as the jet stream. The jet stream is an upper level wind system that is the upper branch of the circulation cells that we talked about much earlier. These upper level winds tend to push weather and storm systems across our country. In the summertime, the jet stream hangs out around the United States Canadian border. However, in the wintertime, there are much larger waves in the jet stream and that can cause very dramatic effects with the weather. Finally, a main topic we want to talk about is air masses. Air masses are large bodies of air with similar temperature and moisture characteristics. How do you get a big amount of air the size of several states to take on uniform characteristics? Let it sit over a region until it gathers the characteristics of its environment. Sometimes air masses form over land. You can guess that these will tend to be dry. We refer to these as continental air masses. On the other hand, if an air mass forms over an ocean, we'll refer to it as a maritime air mass. 
Again, speaking for the United States, some air masses will form up in the north. We will refer to these as polar or even Arctic air masses, and if they're forming in the southern part of our country, we'll refer to them as tropical air masses. We abbreviate these often with the lowercase c and m and the capital P or T. Finally, we may also be more specific and talk about the five locations that could affect the United States, the five areas around the United States, the Pacific, Atlantic, Gulf of Mexico, Canada, or Mexico. So for North America, what are the primary air masses that affect our part of the world? Well, a dominant one is the cold, dry air mass, the continental polar or continental polar Canadian air mass. It's, this brings cold weather to much of the center of our country. A smaller but very important air mass is also the maritime polar Pacific. This brings the cool, wet weather to cities like Seattle and Portland, Oregon. There is a maritime tropical air mass, but that one tends to be fairly rare for the United States because it's blocked by the coastal mountains. A much more dominant air mass is the continental tropical air mass. This one provides the hot, dry weather for much of the American Southwest. For those of you in the southeastern United States, the maritime tropical Gulf air mass is what brings us most of our humidity and precipitation. This is a very common air mass that affects the southeastern United States. Maritime tropical Atlantic. This one is actually fairly rare, as is the maritime polar Atlantic. Because we live in the westerlies, these last two air masses do not affect our weather nearly as much. So let's put this all together. Take a look at the jet streams and think about air masses. Well, it may be hard to see the United States in here, so let's highlight it. This is a rather typical linear pattern to the jet stream. The weather would be fairly consistent in a scenario such as this. Take a look at this one. I hope you can see why, if you were making a weather forecast for the northern Great Plains and the Rocky Mountain states, it wouldn't become as a surprise that you would expect much colder weather because the wind is coming directly out of the polar regions. On the other hand, for those who live in the Mississippi Valley or the southeastern or east coast of the United States, we could expect much warmer weather because in this region of the country, the wind is coming out of the southwest. Another pattern of the jet stream, in this case, the eastern United States is experiencing that cold air coming out of the north. So we would expect in the mid-Atlantic states, a much colder weather forecast when the jet stream is in a pattern such as this. When we put air masses and the jet stream together, we have a good understanding of the basics of weather forecasting. If you want to know if the temperature is going up or coming down, let's take a look at which air mass is blowing into our area. In our next video, we'll take a look at Frontal systems. Fronts are the border between air masses, and that's where a lot of weather will occur. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.